Greetings, Fleshy Mammals, and welcome back to a brand new Naruto the Boruto Shinobi Striker build video. Today, we are putting together a healing type build, oddly enough. Normally, I don't really do healing type builds. I think I only have, like, maybe two or three healing type builds on this channel. But I actually came across a healing type build that I think is actually pretty interesting. It's more of a defensive support type build than it is a healing type build, but, uh, yeah, it's really freaking strong. So, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's go! Alright, starting things off with the weapon as per the usual, I decided to go with the famed Blade Kurosawa. Now my reasoning for this is pretty damn simple, I just really like the combos for it. Realistically, you can go with whichever weapon you see fit for this build, whichever fits your playstyle the best. But personally, I went with Fame Blade Kurosawa because it's what I'm used to, it's what I know, so I decided to go with that. Uh, some other recommendations that I do have, you can also go with the frying pan if you want to be goofy. Uh, you can actually go with the knife as well if you want to be extra goofy. Quite a few other things that you can go with, you can literally go with any weapon you want. But I decided to go with the Fame Blade Kurosawa because, well... It's just good. It's got good speed, good hit rate, good range. Its lunge attack isn't the greatest. Its lunge is kind of meh, but everything else on the Fame Blade Kurosawa is actually pretty damn good. So overall, I decided to go with it because once again, it's what I'm used to. For the ninja tool, I decided to go with the Healing Seal Type 2. Now my reasoning for this is pretty simple as well. We just need to be healing. Um, the more we heal, the faster our ultimate charges, the faster our ultimate charges, the better. Um, but overall, I feel like this is very good for staying alive longer, keeping your teammates alive if you're defending a point, and just overall, if you're in a 1v1 and you're starting to lose, you can literally just throw this out and you get some health back. It's a pretty good ninja tool overall, and it's definitely a really, really strong one. Moving on to the skills. For the top skill, I decided to go with Power in Spades. Now, essentially what this does is it increases your ninjutsu damage, which is actually pretty important for the jutsus that we are using in this build, which I'll get into in a minute. For the bottom skill, I decided to go with Arm and dangerous which actually um, decreases your ninja tool cooldown time that's pretty important for our ninja tool in particular because this is our only form of healing and this also boosts our ultimate charge not like the you know the ninja tool but like when we use our ninja tool we get ultimate charge you know what i mean so like your ultimate charge is faster when you're healing as a healing type therefore it's very good to have your uh, ninja tool active more because this is our main form of getting our ultimate ready and uh finally we got our accessory skill now once again this one just like in most of my builds the accessory skill is entirely up to you and well i went with battle hardened now this is where everything kind of starts to come together every time we get a ko it instantly refills our health so we are healing ourselves by getting more ko's now that factors into power and spades with our ninjutsus and speaking of ninjutsus, for the first ninjutsu, I actually went with Water Pillar. Go figure. This has been pretty much a staple for most healing types since Mei has released. It's generally a very, very strong jutsu to have, just overall. It allows you to capture points. It makes Barrier Battle a breeze. Um, it makes Capture the Flag really, really hard for attackers. Overall, it's a very, very, very strong jutsu for defensive capabilities. Um, also, in some cases, for quite a few ultimates I've noticed, where you can actually pop up Water Pillar when someone's activating their ultimate, and a lot of the time you'll actually end up surviving, because a lot of these ultimates don't break Water Pillar for some reason. Uh, this is just something that I've noticed. So yeah, overall, the defensive capabilities of Water Pillar combined with its really fast cooldown at only 15 seconds, it's a very, very strong ninjutsu to have, and I highly recommend it, but once again, you are going to need the Mei DLC for this jutsu. Moving on to the second ninjutsu, I went with Nervous System Rupture. Now, this one is also pretty strong. Uh, the reasoning that I went with Nervous System Rupture over the Chakra Scalpel is because it's at a 13 second cooldown, so it's got one more second than Chakra Scalpel. But the range on Nervous System Rupture is actually significantly more, and I really do feel like messing with someone's controls is actually very fun, which is one of the reasons. And another thing is that, well, 
you can see a lot of people kind of just floundering around when you reset, like when you reverse their controls, which is very fun to see. Now, the biggest part um, with this is actually when it factors into our substitution. Yes, that is right. It combos with our substitution actually very, very well. Um, our substitution, we actually went with the Crystal Ice Mirror Clone Jutsu, we'll, we'll just call it Ice Clone for short. So basically when someone gets hit by the Ice Clone and then we use Nervous System Rupture, it does a ton of damage. Like it does half health on attack types, about 75% health on range types, it damn near kills other healing types, and it, it honestly doesn't do all that much to a defense type, but so does like 90% of these types of combos. But yeah, we decided to go with those two in particular for the combo. I think it works with a handful of other. I think this also works with the Sand Clone Jutsu and maybe the Lightning Clone Jutsu as well. But I decided to go with the Ice Clone Jutsu because the Ice Clone seems to hold people in place for a much longer period of time than most other cloning jutsus. So that's why I decided to go with that. It's very, very good if you combo those two together. So basically if you get into like a 1v1 or Hell, even, even a 2v1 and you substitute and someone gets hit by the Ice Clone, you can just throw in Nervous System Rupture and that'll do a ton of damage. And then on top of that, you're going to be reversing their control. So even if they do survive it, they're going to be floundering around with their reversed controls for a little bit. So overall, I feel like this combo is pretty strong as a whole. Now, moving on to the Ultimate Jutsu. I actually ended up going with Solid Fog Jutsu. Now this one, once again, is a May DLC Jutsu. So we're going with the Solid Fog Jutsu and it actually combos pretty decently with the Water Pillar. Let's say you're standing on top of B Point on uh, base battle. You throw up a Water Pillar and then you activate your uh, Solid Fog Jutsu and boom, you're gonna be burning through people in no time. And combine that with the fact that our Ninjutsu damage is increased, you're gonna be burning them for a faster rate on top of that. And for each person you kill, you are healing yourself. And on top of that, you're gonna be charging your Ninjutsu using the healing as well. So overall, this is a pretty strong combo in my opinion, though there might be better alternatives that you can use as well. But I really, really like this combination. It seems to flow very, very well, especially in defensive situations. In offensive situations, it's a little bit 50-50 because it really depends on what you're dealing with as far as attacking goes. So you can be attacking someone. You can, you can be very offensive with this build as well because if you have Water Pillar active, you can literally just throw up Water Pillar and then you're, you're good, you're good to go. And then you can just heal yourself while you're in the Water Pillar and then you can continue going. And on top of that, the Water Pillar stays up even after you die, so you can literally just throw it up on top of a point, on top of the flag, on top of uh, the stakes in ba uh, barrier battle. You can literally do a ton of stuff with this specific build, and I really, really enjoyed it. It's a very fun build to mess around with, actually. <laughs> Probably one of my more fun builds, honestly. So, uh, yeah, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, remember to leave a like, subscribe for my content, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. It's been casual.